It was quite extensive. I did quite a bit of reading from different sources, all by Bruce R. McConkie, though. Um, and in that, it was very clear cut what it was. It's making sure you're calling an election. I went back to our little MCS. Yes, I've, I've read that. I understand that. That's what it's about. Now, I, I in me, uh, being me, figured I'm not ready for this. You know, I'm not, <laughs> I haven't yet proven. I'm, I'm not, you know, this isn't, I can't believe it's happening to me. Um, so I'm going through all sorts of things of what, not that I had anything major to repent of or anything, but, you, you know, you just don't feel that you're, you're at that level. You're you're that you know that were, any of us are that worthy. So um, okay, was, I'm gonna I'm gonna well, go ahead and read I'm gonna go ahead and read from Mormon doctrine what it says about calling an election. Sure, is that all right? Sure. Yeah. It says those members of the church who devote themselves wholly to righteousness, living by every word that proceedeth forth from the mouth of God, make their calling and election sure. That is, they receive the more sure word of prophecy which means that the Lord seals their exaltation upon them while they are yet in this life. Correct. Peter summarized the course of righteousness, which the saints must pursue to make their calling and election sure, and then referring to his experience on the Mount of Transfiguration with James and John, said that those three had received this more sure word of prophecy. And then it refers to Second Peter chapter 1. And it goes on to say, Joseph Smith taught, quote, after a person has faith in Christ, repents of his sins, and is baptized for the remission of his sins and receives the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands, which is the first comforter, then let him continue to humble himself before God, hungering and thirsting after righteousness and living by every word of God. And the Lord will soon say unto him, Son, thou shalt be exalted. When the Lord has thoroughly provided him and finds that the man has, has thoroughly proved him and finds that the man is determined to serve him at all hazards, then the man will find his calling and election made sure. Then it will be his privilege to receive the other comforter. To receive the other comforter is to have Christ appear to him and to see the visions of eternity. Okay, so that's actually saying that there is some type of visitation with Christ, potentially. Yep. Right? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so so that's the kind of stuff that you read as you as you prepared to go to the temple. Is that right? That's correct, yes. Any, any react like, what were your reactions? What did you think? Like, you, you said you started to feel that you weren't worthy? Well, yeah, I, I hope that's a natural reaction. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, which one of it? I mean, you, you know, you, you answer temple recommend questions. That doesn't mean you say you're perfect. Um, you, you're trying everything your best, but um, do I get angry thoughts? Do I do this? Do I? You know, <laughs> there are things. So yes, I spent a lot of time prior to that, and a lot of time on my knees and and, and considering all sorts of things. Because as far as I was concerned, I'm I'm going to meet the savior, and he knows. You know, this isn't meeting a, a state president or a bishop. This is meeting the savior. So you thought you might meet the Savior at the temple? Uh, I didn't think. I well, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, what you, were you, you going to say? You just read out what what's happening. I didn't think I'd need to say too much. I mean, if if he's going, I think he's going to have more to say to me than I'm going to say to him. So you were getting ready to meet the Savior. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And and was your wife invited? Yes. Yes. So it was something to be done together together that's right but, but she wasn't in the original meeting where the invitation was no. extended no no she wasn't it was it was me then that invited her okay um and i then booked i mean what we did it was uh, it was on again it was on a sunday which is an unusual thing so i actually booked uh, i i funny thing was i phoned the preston temple uh to arrange a room for us on saturday night i decided i wasn't going to drive up there um uh, Elder Ballard and Elder Hillen were going by uh, one of the Huntsman's jets. They were, they were traveling in that way. And I was to drive up to the Preston Temple with my wife on, on the – well, and I decided we would stay there at the – you know, what better thing than to stay at the temple overnight and, and walk in the grounds hand in hand and just prepare. So I phoned up the temple just to book a room, and as soon as I gave my name, they said, oh, yes, yes, you're here for the, the special occasion. Wow. And they booked me in. And when we got there, I didn't realize they gave us the honeymoon suite. <laughs> they, they just treated us so well. We had a honeymoon suite at the Preston Temple. I didn't even know they had such things. 
Um, in in the temple itself? On the yeah, well, yeah. The, there's accommodation at, actually at the temple, um, and this was the honeymoon suite um, that that was reserved for us. And uh, I thought it was just absolutely fantastic. We had a, you know, we walked around hand in hand the temple grounds that night and retired to our you know honeymoon suite, ready to get up the next morning for this very special uh, occasion. Wow. And again, what what did you say to your wife? What did you guys talk about? Well, she wouldn't. I tried to get her to read the same things as I did, but she, uh, again, and sometimes sisters like they just seem to have a more simple faith and you know whatever. It's it, it didn't. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I was making a bigger issue of it, and, and possibly she was. I don't know. Or so maybe she was just she was just yeah. relaxed about it. Seemed more relaxed than I. Certainly internally, there didn't seem to be too much of a problem. It was just something we were going to do together. Okay, she recognized it was going to the temple. It was a very special thing to do. But, you know, um, I don't know that she understood, hang on, we could be meeting the Savior here. Um, right. Or, and I didn't know at that stage whether we met him then or he, it came afterwards or, or whatever. But all I knew was this, this is a serious business. This is... This is earth shattering, really. Um, and I can't talk about I mean, we went there early. Well, we went to the temple, as I say, on the Saturday, and we actually bumped into some ward members that were there for a wedding. And uh, they actually asked us, well, what, what are you doing here on a Saturday night? And again, we had to just uh, kind of duck the issue and not, not tell them why we were there. Right. Um, uh, it, so in some ways, even after that, the, 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 when I say lie, um, it was easy enough for me because because people knew my position in the church. It would have been hard if I didn't have this. I could easily say, well, look, I even if they found out I was at the temple on the uh, on the Sunday that you know I was asked just to go there to to meet with Elder Ballard and and uh, Elder Hillam, and that would have been appropriate for my. Uh, calling right. anyway so it wasn't a big you know it, it could easily get passed over it wasn't a big deal got it okay